Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the Our Painted Lives channel. This is our first video for January 1st, so Happy New Year. Uh, here's to hoping that everyone uh, watching has an amazing uh, 2020. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different from the ones that are coming next week because for this one, we're actually going to do the uh, drawing stage of a painting. We're actually going to emphasize, you know, what I'm actually thinking about while I do my uh, my initial sort of drawing. So what you're going to see is all real time. We we're not going to be able to do that with every single video because if we we're gonna do real-time painting. It would take about four, you know, anywhere between three to five hours, and nobody's gonna watch like three to five hours of daily painting. So, but for this one, I thought it was it, it would be interested if you could kind of peek into my brain and see, you know, what my thought process is while I'm drawing. Uh, for tomorrow, I'm gonna do the underpainting stage of of the painting, and then on Friday we're going to do the, um, you know, the final painting. And we're going to try and see if we could do real time on all of those. I'm not sure if that's going to work out for the painting stage because that's what takes, you know, the most time. But uh, we felt, both Danny and I, that it would be cool to just give you guys like an idea of, you know, how long it takes me to do, uh, for a small painting, how long it takes me to do the, the initial drawing. So I'm going to start with, uh, bigger shapes mm, because probably the most important aspect of drawing is not so much detail but the uh, relationships between bigger shapes that you know eventually end up making what your picture looks like so composition for me it's probably the most important part of the painting um, so we have to realize that these first few steps are actually the most important part uh, I tend to kind of draw very quickly at the beginning just to have a sense of what my image is going to look like. So I try not to stop at anything that's, you know, kind of particular, but I just travel very, very quickly through the image. Um, this way, if I have to make changes, I can, you know, just very, very simply and very quickly make adjustments like right here. So this gives me, you know, an idea of what I'm about to do. It's kind of like this slanted pyramid. It almost looks like a, like a rock formation. Um, and I think it's, it's pretty cool. It has enough weight to it and it's gonna be a dark shape down here. So I think that's probably gonna work out. But since this is a drawing of Danny, wearing a scarf. I want to make that scarf shape because that's probably going to be the most important part of the painting. Um, be relevant. So that one has to be almost like oversized. It is already a bigger shape, but I want to make it um, sort of oversized to try and push that. Now, a lot of you people already know this about me, but I f tend to favor character over likeness. So I'll try to push things that I feel are, um, you know, they're present in nature, but also things that, you know, I'm drawn towards. So the way, the easiest way I've found to emphasize what I enjoy about, you know, the image that I'm looking at is just to make them, you know, bigger. And by bigger, you know, I'm trying to use a, a, a word that generalizes, you know, all the aspects of, of what I'm searching for, but it's probably um, has to do with, you know, the relationship of, of length uh, and width. Um, so let's try to see if we can make this a little bit bigger. There's a slight sort of slant of the shoulders and she's kind of bunching the, the shoulders up a little bit. So I want to keep that in mind while I'm doing that. But yeah, I want the, the most important relationship I'm, I'm noticing is going to be this scarf that tucks, you know, tucks way behind over there. Then it has like a really nice gesture that comes around and settles over here. So the, the weight of it has to kind of be felt over here. Um, and 
Uh, so that also wraps around over there. Okay, let me see. This one tucks in underneath over here. And it all sort of, you know, all these gestures also kind of fit nicely, fit in nicely to where her mouth is going to be. So that's, that's going to be a super, super important part of, of the drawing, you know, and eventually of the painting, because um, that's where a ton of tension is going to be. Uh, I also like that the hair is wrapping around. And uh, I'm noticing that this, the fact that the hair travels and then wraps, you know, behind the head, kind of like that, is going to be a, th you know, sort of a th recurring theme of the painting. So this is coming from way back there, traveling through here, and then, um, you know, hair is doing the same thing. So it's a kind of cool reminder of of yeah form has to travel through space and i have to sort of ask myself okay where did this shape come from and how is it traveling through space and where is it ending up mm. i like that this one comes down and this one feels sharper on the other side so that one is doing that uh there's this there's a you know there was a a slant here in the shoulders, an angle. I like that in the, the head doesn't feel symmetrical and that's something that I always pay attention to. But there's also like a slight kind of angle up here that I really, really like. Um, I'm gonna push that too. So this part of her head essentially is gonna feel different from that one. And I, I, I love doing stuff like that. Um, and her hair parts in here. It's kind of nice to have a, a sort of axis that is a little off or, it, or, you know, while it travels, it goes, you know, through the middle, but then it goes off. Um, again, it, it emphasizes that idea that, you know, our bodies are not perfectly symmetrical. So this kind of has a peak there and it travels downward and then behind that one, you can, feel the top of the skull a little bit more. Then I like that the hair um, sort of bunches up in here a little bit. It peaks also and then, and it's probably because, you know, I, I had originally put the, um, the scarf wrapping around here, but I've already noticed that it's actually, it wouldn't have been nice it, it wouldn't have been cool to have them sort of at the same level. So this is nicer too, that it wraps around, you know, a lot higher. That's kind of nice. Uh, so this is probably the most important moment of, of this initial kind of drawing because I already have a set of proportions that's gonna tell me, you know, what size of head I'm doing and how that head is gonna relate, you know, to the rest of the body. Also the placement of the head, if I wanted to do that, you know, in the middle or if it's off. Right now it's a little bit off-centered and I feel that that's, that's, you know, probably the most exciting uh, area where I could put that head. Um, and again, but there's not enough commitment right now so that if I would have to change something about this drawing, I would be able to change it very, very quickly. Um, I'm also very mindful, like, I know this is very small, but, um, you know, if that kind of initial slope of her hair is doing that in that direction, I kind of don't want to echo the same, sort of the same direction there. Because it, you know, it's, whenever you create like a rhythm in your painting, your eye is going to go straight to it. So I want to be mindful and break that rhythm. So instead of that, I'm going to go down just to have a little more tension. And then eventually those kind of even out, you know, at the top of her head. But, um, so that's kind of nice too. Um, 
let's see. But I'm right now I'm more concerned about this bigger shape, this bigger sort of contour that I have going on here. Uh, also, I'm noticing that there's a peak here. Uh, this one goes. There's a peak in her skull here in the way her the hair is kind of laid on top of the skull here and it goes at an angle it doesn't go down and this one kind of swoops around it goes from very small to larger uh, that's that's kind of nice uh, and then this one that I thought that was small we're gonna try to make it a little bit bigger the one that's wrapping around here so uh, let's see peaks goes down So yeah, so that's gonna be my most important shape here. Uh, and while it goes down, it has like these weird little shapes here, this scarf. This, there's a little bit of it coming down here. And it goes down. I need to find where the, where it weighs down, where that, you know, that curve has that peak where it weighs down and where it, then it, you know, it goes back up. Again, you know, it is a contour that I'm, you know, favoring right now, but I'm also trying to see how the inner shapes are dictating what the contour looks like. So that's super important. Um, there's bits of hair here that I found, that I find like really, really cool that are popping out of, you know, this underneath the scarf. So I am gonna, you know, kind of enjoy doing those. They're, you know, it's not a lot of detail, but I, I think it's kind of nice to connect how the hair is flowing from up here, underneath, and then it pops out here. And I like how the, um, how the jacket is also, you know, traveling almost with this gesture but I don't want to make it, you know, go in the same tangent. So I'm going to offset it a little bit. Um, kind of have the hair do that and then offset it here. And again, it comes from all this tension, but then it has to wrap around and do that because Danny had, uh, she was holding a bag. So the bag is actually pushing, um, the side of the jacket. I really like that. So we have kind of like our major, you know, uh, shape in terms of hierarchy, but there's also really cool stuff happening here that I'm just noticing how, how all these little shapes are affected by the, uh, the bigger shapes in the, uh, in the drawing. So that's, that's going to be super important to have something that's, you know, probably your most exciting shape here and then, you know, lesser but, you know, still exciting shapes um, happening in the uh, periphery of that, you know, that center uh, of the, um, of what's going to be the painting. Uh, so there's that strap of her bag is right here. Uh, and there's a ton of tension here but then it loosens up a little bit. It loosens up over here. You can see the lower, kind of like that bottom strap. Do this. And... Uh, it's always super cool because I'm noticing that if I follow like the zipper of the bag, it is almost like pointing downward. So it's, it, it's kind of cool because this space here is not going to just be empty, but it can be kind of activated by interesting shapes and shapes that kind of draw your attention downward. Hopefully your eye is not going to stay down here. Your eye is going to want to wander around here to travel all these forms, but then go back to the, uh, to what is supposed to be our our um, 
you know, in terms of hierarchy, are the, the area which is most important in our drawing uh, and eventually in our painting. So that strap is doing that. I like, I think there's a tiny shape here that I don't understand quite well here. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'll figure it out later. Uh, I think it's part of the bag, maybe. Uh, and then eventually other little straps here. But I want to keep these, when I'm painting these, I want to keep them looser too. I don't want a ton of detail here. Detail is going to be here. I don't want a ton, ton of detail here. I don't want my eye to say, well, everything was important. Every single moment of the painting was equally important. I don't feel our eye really behaves that way, the way we perceive things. Uh, it doesn't really behave that way. So I like that this arm here starts very, it feels super kind of fragile and thin, like her shoulders are in and they, they're kind of tucked in and um, they kind of, you know, it kind of does that. It pushes out, so I'm actually pushing that a lot, the way it kind of pinches here, but I, I love to do that. I love to, um, again, distort gesture if I feel it can communicate something that I'm, you know, that I'm sensing in the image. So I, I like that it pinches there, and then it feels curvy here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want it to feel curvy or if I want it to feel straight. And then a bigger, you know, in her lower arm, then it just feels like this would be her biceps. And then in her forearm, in her, in her um, elbow and forearm, it just feels like all these forms are starting to break into just bigger shapes. And you get like all these kind of cool folds there. That again, we can't, we can't have a ton of like uh, information there, but enough that makes it exciting so that we want to uh, travel downward. Um, and whenever I do an arm, I try to go to my other arm to see how that one compares to the one that I just laid in. So this one, is, I, I, I wanted to pinch this one in and to make it feel thin, just so that I can make this one feel larger. I, I kind of like that. Oh, and I just noticed the arm is here. It's kind of doing this and it's tucked in way up here because in here it all, it's, it, it's almost like drapery. It all comes down. So there's probably like her biceps probably here and, uh, and her, you know, her elbow is back here and then it breaks the arm there, but it's making like all these like super cool folds. Um, I'm painting on my phone and I'm getting like all these uh, notifications. So my phone is buzzing all the time. I'm, I'm using my phone as my reference. So it doesn't matter, who cares? Um, but what I noticed is that her jacket, which is kind of cool, since it's like a, sh like a small um, leather jacket, it actually bunched up behind her and it just, it's coming forward. So this, is not really part of her arm. This is part of her jacket down there. And I think it'll, it'll, um, it'll work because she was sitting on this chair and these are the arms of the chair. It's kind of metal arms of the chair. There's no metal arm here, which would have been cool, but I can kind of fake it uh, because I think I'm getting the, the other part of the jacket here. So I, I have to be mindful against, again with my tangents. Don't just bring that jacket over here because you're going to lose that shape. You can offset it. So this is, if this is like a really cool shape here, it has, it can be like a little underneath and then it's doing that. And I have to be careful about what's happening here. I think, you know, I could, I could just push this to the side and then just make it like a really kind of nice, large, um, you know, have it like a, a a large shape with a large base or I can you know try and have something a little exciting there I'm not I'm not sure I want that it, there is a break but I'm probably just gonna make this extend over here so small small decisions but I think overall that can lend to this feeling 
um, like it has enough weight to it. You know, there's there's a lot of weight so that it can hold all the kind of cool, interesting stuff that's happening up here. Um, but, you know, it, it doesn't have to feel boring. You know, the fact that it's a secondary shape doesn't mean that it has to feel boring. So it has to feel interesting enough. Um, let me see. The arm, yeah, it actually gets really big here and it's crossing. So that's actually gonna be cool. So this shape that I thought was gonna tuck in here, it's probably best if I, well, I'll find a compromise like between those two. And it'll cross around uh, this one. I'm gonna try not to follow that because I feel it's kind of boring. This one's gonna do that. And there's a slight little change there, which is gonna make it a little more exciting also. Uh, it's like a little strap there. Uh, these are shapes. I kind of like this that, you know, there's a fold here that's doing that, but this one is kind of doing that. I'm, I, I always try to be mindful of, of, you know, the gesture of my shapes. And if I'm repeating them too much, I feel it's, they're kind of boring. So if I see that there's a slight difference between them, I'm gonna push it. So this one is, you know, it, it kind of pinches here and it, then it draws your eye down. Um, but then the one right next to it has a slight kind of slope in that, you know, a curve in that direction, but I'm gonna push that one. Because I feel that against that is better to than just to draw these shapes like that. Um, Let's see, there's also a peak in that curve here. So while this is where probably the, the, um, the most tension there is in my shoulder, it actually, in the jacket, it breaks up into these two uh, sort of seams. And uh, I like that. Uh, so I'm trying to decide if I want that shoulder way up there, probably because it is straighter, but I sense like a slope. It's so tiny, but I like that. So I'm gonna try to do that. Uh, there's like a little fold here. Again, this is gonna be a drawing, but a drawing to eventually, you know, put, you know, paint over it to do an underpainting. I'm sorry, that's my, uh, that's my uh, trash can. I'm just, I, I really like like a surgical tip on my, uh, on my uh, color pencils when I'm drawing. Um, so I, uh, I'm not gonna do a ton of detail on this drawing. I, I need it to be structured. I need it to speak about the, competi the composition that I need for my, you know, for my painting. I need to try and solve those things right now, but I don't, care to do a ton of detail. I'm gonna to try to solve that while I paint. So I have to be careful not to get carried away with the drawing, you know, uh, um, stage of this painting because I do want certain things to be solved while painting. Um, let me see. That's kind of cool. So I just wanna mark like the bigger folds in, in, the, in this arm. I don't want it to be way, way too busy, but I don't want it to feel like super empty either. Mm. Right there. I think the base is gonna be exciting enough, so I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, I'm gonna go back into the, um, into the upper area of the uh, drawing and try to, um, work how the smaller shapes, the smaller features in this bigger shape of the head sort of fit in. So um, I, again, I feel this is good, you know, this is good enough. So let's go into these and I'm not gonna just, you know, all of a sudden slow down and start rendering an eye. I'm gonna try to find what the, um, you know, the, uh, again, the bigger sort of clues in my structure um, are so that they can help me find that 
for example, that socket that's in here. And if those are right, then I can move into trying to make the smaller details feel part of the bigger shape. Trying to decide if, I, if it's up here or down there. We'll see. I like that there's a tiny difference between one brow and the other. And I feel I can make I can make them um, slightly different and it's gonna feel a little more exciting. And there's a tiny slant to the eye also that I think can be very cool. So there's going to be more of a clue of her upper lip than one of her lower lip. Lower lip is going to, you know, be way underneath, you know, those two folds of the uh, scarf. So I'm trying to check and see if, you know, I, I tend to treat my eyes independently, by which I mean that I think that it's super cool when each one of them has like a very definite specific gesture. Um, but I, I'm also mindful that they have to behave sort of in unison also. Um, one eye can't just like wander and do you know whatever it wants and then the other one you know doing the same thing so i um i always try to find a compromise between what i you know the the distortion that i want and the actual gesture that i'm looking at that's why i started you know that eye over here but i'm lowering it down and I think that kind of feels really nice now. It's so important to get those features sitting in the right place because there's not many clues as to what the, you know, the contour of her head, you know, looks like. So we, what we have is just how this, you know, these little bits of 
head, these little bits of features of face, are framed by her hair and then framed by the scarf. So the little bits that I have here of her temple and of her cheekbone, they have to be, you know, enough to, you know, structured enough so that I know where to place, you know, my larger features and um, like my more important features and it doesn't look off. It just doesn't look like, okay, that head is not, you know, the features are not corresponding to, the, to where that head is sitting in. But I think that they correspond quite nicely here. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with that because that's probably, that was the, one of the bigger challenges of, of trying to solve this, uh, this drawing. Um, again, that theme about tucking in behind and going from front to back, back to front. Um, so what's happening here, what I described initially, it's also what happens in the lower lid. It, it has to tuck in way behind there. And that's, that's a super cool kind of moment of, of the eye. You know, don't just think of the eyes like, you know, horizontally. You have to also think that it's a sphere underneath there, so you have to travel around it. And I think that has a ton of attitude. If I can, if I can keep that brow just going up a little here, um, and the, you know, sort of this these eyes looking off page at something that's kind of making her go that way, kind of pushing her off. I feel she's almost rejecting something that's way off the painting that I hadn't noticed, you know, when I when I started um, doing the uh, the image. Oh, this is very nice. I just noticed that. So this isn't just a big gesture that looks like a claw. It actually um, comes from behind. Then it does. It's not doing this. It actually that curve changes right here because it tucks in over here, but then there's a lower part of the uh, of the scarf. There's like a lower kind of level here. But I have to be careful because I just noticed that then if I do that, then I have this, this moment where my upper lip um, is kind of coinciding perfectly with that lower kind of level of the scarf and this one coming in. And I don't know if I want so much stuff happening, you know, at that exact moment. Even though the, there's a shadow, I mean, this is more that way. There's that nice shadow here that is gonna help me out. Um, there's a nice kind of cast shadow from the scarf that's gonna help me out um, to solve that. But I don't know if this is a right decision. I actually think this one coming in here as a bigger shape is gonna be better. Because it won't complicate things, you know, too much. So, I think I'm gonna keep that bigger shape. Even though, again, this is actually something that comes down here. Maybe I can just suggest a break there, but then have that shape do that. I think it's, it's a lot better. And maybe since there's a slight angle here, I can angle the mouth. So there's not... So it suggests that the uh, corner of the mouth is right here and it's not like up here as if it was, you know, as, as, as the one we were suggesting, suggesting uh, with the other shapes. So I think that's gonna help out a lot. Um, I always do this with Danny's nose. They, it has like a slight slope, but I exaggerated a ton, but I just love it. I, I love how that kind of breaks. Uh, it breaks lower 
on this side and it pinches here and there's a big swoop here and she has a great mole over here that I always kind of suggest um, I don't want to do a ton of structure again I want to sort of lay in a lot of the information but I don't I want to give myself like um, the opportunity to make exciting decisions while I'm painting okay here's her nose ring which is a great again gesture it's a great detail but it's a great gesture nostril is behind and then it's kind of larger tip of her nose so I'm paying more again I'm paying more attention to structure than anything else and Danny's nose is ton of structure so I, I love painting her nose uh, this tiny little shadow there and this underplane I really have to remember to describe this underplane of the nose because this it's so sharp she has a very very sharp nose so I don't want the tip to feel like it ends up as a flat kind of pointy shape it has to tuck in underneath and it has to turn and I love that it's not quite from her brow the socket is actually right underneath and then this there's, there's this really cool kind of gesture that points down downward it's not quite the same from one side to the other and it doesn't manifest it itself so much you know in one side and the other. The other here I kind of feel the, the sort of you know side of the socket but just to know where to put my highlight in her nose which is going to be there it's kind of cool to remember that there's this big gesture that points downwards there. Uh, let's see Again, I'm, I'm just making almost notes in my drawing stage to remind me of things that I need to pay attention to, you know, in the, um, during the uh, painting stage. And these things are probably going to be emphasized when I do my underpainting, when I do my umber underpainting. Um, and I want to emphasize them just so that I remember not to forget, you know, not to uh, forget them while I paint and you know once the painting is done they're almost going to be invisible uh, that's why it's important to uh, at least for myself to just exaggerate them initially okay again finding smaller breaks on these bigger shapes that I had laid down before. I like I love how it pushes up in that direction. Everything sort of pushes this is this pushes up. It almost follows that. I really like that. But then it plants itself down. So that pushes up also. There's a ton of diagonals that are pushing that way. I, I think that's super cool. I wish this, these were all things that I noticed when I saw, you know, when I took the photo and when I saw the photo initially. But that's what's really cool about painting is that it makes you then sort of dissect your image and you start seeing like all these amazing things that that maybe, you know, initially you subconsciously liked it, liked them. Like you liked how those things made the whole thing feel, but you weren't aware of them when you, when you just decided to say, oh, I'm going to take a photo of this. But now is a moment where you can really, really investigate them. So, let's see. Do that. I'm just checking my bigger contour, which is, um, for me, it's always like super, super important. Uh, there's the brow over here. 
Th these are c sort of cast shadows of this little kind of strand of hair that's floating a little bit. So it's doing that. And then this one crosses over and comes from up here. I love shapes that start. That's how the body usually behaves. It, they either start thin and they go, they start thin and they go big, or they start big and then they go smaller. So I, I really like that shape here. And then there's this um, other bit of hair here that I have to try and solve. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. That one I have. I want to push that. Oh, that's kind of nice. This kind of is this. This is kind of a reminder. This moment in here is kind of a reminder of that. So I I I, I like that. I like that I can find like echoes in some areas of other areas of of the body or you know of the image. Uh, so we're doing that. That one comes in. This is all. This is mostly going to be in shade. I, I'm not thinking about, you know, light and dark right now. I'm just thinking about structure. Again, structure, gesture, composition, overall structure, overall gesture, which, you know, uh, in themselves are going to shape what my, what my image is actually going to look like. So I, I really, I, I don't want to start thinking about light and dark right now. I want shapes, structure, underlying structure to be able to tell like a story. And then I want my light and dark to be able to emphasize that story. And then I want the modeling of form to then kind of clinch it all and, and, and eventually, you know, tell the, the story of how this is, you know, a painting. Um, it's kind of cool. Uh, I'm seeing something here that I kind of like that this one actually wraps here but then the bigger shape goes low and then it does that and then this starts super thin here very very thin it almost feels like that lip like I'm seeing like almost like the the, the, the place where the scarf turns, but then I get to see more of, of that scarf. So that's gonna be important. These little moments are gonna be super important. Um, and of course this is a knitted scarf, but I'm not gonna do all these tiny little shapes. If anything, I'm gonna try to, um, to, to, uh, give some suggestions, but I, I don't think the painting really depends on, on me being able to just describe this texture. I think it would be a nice detail, but again, uh, and this is for me, but I've, I've been trying to, to, um, to concentrate a lot more on, on the bigger aspect of, of an image instead of like the smaller parts that make up that image. So that's, you know, I would say that that's a great little detail, but it falls on, you know, what I would consider a kind of secondary detail. And, and many times it's actually distracting to just say, to convince yourself that, oh yeah, I'm, this painting is about that scarf. And maybe, you know, maybe a painting that you're doing can be about that scarf, but I don't feel this particular painting is about a scarf, so. It's about that bigger shape that is kind of sheltering this head and it just, it's, it, it almost feels more organic than just a scarf. Um, that's it. I just want to travel again through my, through my drawing and uh, try and sort of double check on these larger gestures that I put down and it's almost like, um, like a, like a jigsaw puzzle now, and I have to try and see if all my um, 
initial marks sort of match uh, what they actually represent. See, so this one that I put here, I have to move to the side a little bit. Mm, that's going to be in shade. Oh, I like that because we had mentioned how there's, you know, all these kind of shapes going in, in there, but I feel it emphasizes the fact that her shoulders are in, she's tucking her shoulders inward. It's almost like she's protecting again from something that's, you know, outside of her image. And I feel that, that the, the tucking of her shoulders inward is, causing a lot of this. So it's cause and effect. Um, and I, I really like that. It doesn't have to happen in my other arm the same way, but I, I like that there's clues to, to that gesture of the body happening, you know, within the folds. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna try to just uh, simplify my, my outer contour here. Uh, See that? That comes over here. Wraps. Uh, I'm gonna have this one come up here. We had name tags uh, that were given to us because this is when we went to the uh, printer when we were having the uh, books printed. Uh, and it's a kind of cool light shape, but I don't know if I want it there. So I'm probably not gonna paint that. So that's probably gonna be dark over here. Uh, and I'll just emphasize the little bits of hair here. Mm. So this one has like a sort of serpentine shapes here, goes down and then it disappears behind this fold, which is kind of nice. Again, gesture all the way up there to this shoulder that again, I don't want to do the same thing that I did here. I want this one to be kind of thinner and simpler. I'm trying to see where to where I want that break to happen. Uh, there was another fold here, but I don't know if I want that and then that. I think I'm going to eliminate that one and just keep the second one. So that, 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 that. This one comes out, 
tucks in underneath. This one probably starts behind there. But again, all these, I think this is gonna go to a very simpler sort of dark shape, darker shape here. Uh, dark here. Yeah, I think this is like a dark gray. Let me see what it, oh no, that's her sweater from underneath, this shape. Oh, it's gonna be nice. I mean, I don't care that it's a sweater. I care that it's a light shape. It's a lighter shape. It's not super light, but I'm probably gonna just remind myself not to make that too um, light. And these are actually her pants, which I haven't seen. That's pretty cool. But then there's a larger one that tucks in, and this is just a rem reminder. That's a very comic booky thing to do, but it's a reminder that those are dark shapes. Dark, dark, dark. So this is nice. Nice, comes down, nice. Does that. Uh, play bigger. Here, inside, out, chair. This is super important, that little tiny bit of, of negative space there is gonna be super cool because, because, and this is the other reason, this is gonna be a dark green, it's gonna be dark green, and these, this is a lighter green floor. So this is, so the painting I feel is gonna be um, super exciting uh, in terms of, of, of the colors that, you know, are going to be kind of present throughout the painting. If you hear, no, 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 no. If you hear howling, those are our, you know, sort of neighbor's dogs. She has like 10 dogs and, you know, they howl. So um, we're going to, we're going to live uh, with that for a while. And, or if we have to live with that, you guys watching the videos have to also. So. I'm gonna make little insinuations of, of um, you know, of where we were. These are like stacks of just like paper that was there. But this is all gonna be just very, very loosely blocked in. It's just to give like a bigger sense of space. Uh, and these are, so sort of racks of, I don't know. It's where they put like probably the uh, the paper that uh, while they were adjusting the uh, colors, all the stuff that didn't work out, all the uh, pages, all the you know um, that didn't really work out, they would lay them on top. But I'm not interested in that. I'm just interesting that there's you know there are these very cool shapes that kind of surround Danny and give her like a sense of place that she's in a very, very specific place. And I kind of like that. And you know, you don't have to know what place this was. It doesn't matter. It doesn't it, but just that she is part of, you know, she's inhabiting this atmosphere that surrounds her. That that's what I um, enjoy most. So it just, again, it's an excuse to do like very cool shapes um, surrounding. Uh, so that's it. That's, I think that this is pretty cool for my, uh, for my drawing stage. Again, it's not meant to be a final drawing. It is more um, sort of the uh, figuring out, you know, where, you know, what my image is going to look like. That's probably the most important aspect of this first, um, first session and uh, and again you know sort of choreographing those shapes so that 
the shapes themselves can tell a story. That's all I'm interested in right now. Uh, and I wouldn't want to take it further because I feel it's going to potentially hinder the freshness of how I, how I approach the uh, painting stage. Um, and I was trying to talk through it. You know, that's probably um, the biggest difference that you're going to see from from this drawing stage video uh, and the other videos that you know we're going to do, which are probably going to be a la prima. This is this is a reminder that I just wanted to show you guys that if I separate you know my 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 paintings into three separate sessions, which would be the drawing stage, then the underpainting stage, which is going to come tomorrow, and then you know the final painting stage. This is this is kind of like my thought process when I do when I do um, each one of these. But in the painting stage, we're actually going to speed it up a little bit, and I'm going to try to talk about you know very central moments in the development of the painting. But I thought it was important for you guys to um, sort of have a window into how my you know what my brain does when I'm trying to to untangle you know the image that I want to make. And so I, I wanted to draw but I also wanted to talk through the drawing process. I, I, I feel that that's very important to, to, for you guys to see if, if my words match with you know, what I'm trying to draw. Uh, but that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me, uh, let me hear what you guys think with comments below. And that's it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.